Hey everyone, I'm Quokak Bro. I'm here announcing that Darren Farrow, an author and illustrator, is going to be reading us a book today. What? What? I'm just here making coffee. You mean I'm reading? I'm supposed to be reading a book? You know what? Cool cat, bro. Anything for you, man. Welcome to the show, Darren Farrow. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Okay. Cool cat, bro, and everybody else. I'm going to read Thank You, Octopus. This is a book that I wrote and illustrated, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that book after I read it. So this is a story about a boy and an octopus who are best friends, and they live together on a tugboat. And during this story, that tugboat happens to be anchored in the Hudson River in between New York City and Hoboken, New Jersey. So as you're kind of, as you're reading through the book, you can see that the New York City skyline kind of floats by because of this boat that they're on. And this is their tugboat. Their, their tugboat is sailing out to sea. So it's sailing down Manhattan, out toward the sea. So this is Thank You Octopus. So the very beginning of the book, the octopus sees that this alarm is going off. There's an alarm over here, it's the bedtime alarm, and it's going off, and this octopus loves to go to bed right on time. So he says, bedtime ahoy! But the little boy, he does not like to go to bed on time. He likes to stay up really late. So he says, ow, pickles! So he's not happy, but the octopus wants to make his best friend feel good and really happy. So he picks him up and he starts to carry him toward the bathtub. And he says, but I made you a nice warm bath. And the boy says, oh, thank you, octopus. And when you turn the page, the octopus says, yeah, I made you a nice warm bath of egg salad. Woo -hoo! And they jump into a bathtub filled with eggs and mustard and mayonnaise, and crackers, and pickles. And the boy says, Oh, gross! No, thank you, octopus! And so now they're sitting in this bathtub filled with eggs, and mustard, and mayonnaise, and pickles. And you can see the octopus is enjoying his bath water. He's actually eating the bath water, but the boy's really grossed out. And so the octopus says, Sorry, I'll dry you off. And the boy says, Thank you, octopus. And the octopus says, yeah, I'll dry you off with my tuba. Brrr. And he blows all the egg salad off the boy and the boy almost falls over and he says, whoa, no thank you, octopus. And there's a little tiny starfish in the window who is uh, looking, looking in going, what is happening in this bathroom? And then the octopus, they get their towels and they're drying off and the octopus goes and grabs their pajamas. And he says, here, I'll help you put your PJs on. And the boy says, thank you, octopus. And the octopus says, yeah, I'll help you put your PJs on the Statue of Liberty, that is. And the octopus climbs to the top of the Statue of Liberty and puts the boy's underpants and T-shirt on the Statue of Liberty. And the boy is way down here and he says, thank you, thank you, octopus, that is super embarrassing. So now the octopus climbs back on board the boat and they're putting their pajamas on and the octopus says, now I'll brush your teeth. And the boy says, thank you, octopus. And the octopus says, with paintbrushes. And he starts painting the boy's teeth pink and purple and yellow. And he's even painting his own teeth blue and pink and yellow. And the boy says, ah, yuck, no thank you, octopus. So that's not a very good way to brush your teeth. He's really grossed out by that. And then they go into the bedroom and they sit down on their rug and the octopus pulls out his favorite book and he says, or oh, how about I read your favorite book? And the boy says, oh, thank you, octopus. And the octopus says, yeah, I'll read your favorite book in robot language. Bleep, blop, blarp, bloop, blop, bleep, blop, blop, bloop, blop, bleep, blarp, blarp, bloop, blop. And the boy says, ay, ay, ay. And then the octopus walks over to the rocking chair and he says, better yet, you look super tired. Let me rock you to sleep. And the boy says, thank you, octopus. And the octopus says, rock and roll you to sleep. Good night, New York City. He puts on a wig and his uh, electric guitar and the boy says, Wah! 
And then they walk over to the bed and they peep under the bed and the octopus says, I even made sure there are no monsters under your bed. And the boy's a little worried and he says, thank you, octopus. And the octopus says, yeah, that's right. I put them all in your closet. And the boy sees all the monsters in his closet and he says, Wah! and so this is kind of like the last straw. And the boy gets really angry. This is like it. He's so mad now. And he says, no, thank you, octopus. And then we have to wonder how this makes his best friend feel. How does this make the octopus feel? And when we turn the page, we see the octopus feels really sad because he didn't, he didn't mean to make his friend so upset and so angry. And so the octopus is kind of looking at the ground and he says, I'm sorry. And then the boy holds out his arms and he says, oh, octopus, let me give you a hug. And the octopus is so surprised. He says, oh, thank you, buddy. He's forgiven. But when we turn the page, the, bear, the boy says, a bear hug. And a giant grizzly bear uh, bursts into the room and gives the octopus a giant squeeze of a hug. And the octopus says, Wah! He's really surprised, so it's kind of like the boy uh, sort of gets the octopus back at the very end. And if you're hunting through this book really carefully, you can see this, this grizzly bear hiding in two other places in the book. Earlier, he's kind of like the boat's captain. He's like the captain of the ship. So at the very end of the book, the octopus climbs up into his bed and he says, good night, buddy. And the boy climbs into his bed and he says, good night, octopus. And you can see the bear laying on the rug here. So the octopus says, hey, don't forget to say goodnight to the bear. And the boy says, thank you, octopus. And your dirty socks. And the boy says, octopus. And the monster's in your closet. And the boy says, octopus. So I kind of think that they never go to bed and they stay up really late being silly. The very, very end of the book, you can see that the boats are all sailing out to sea. And then the octopus plays a little joke on me on this, on this inside back flap. And then the back of the book, you can see the octopus is playing another joke on the boy. He's putting a little sign on the boy's back that says, tickle me. And so the front cover says, thank you, octopus. And the back cover says, no, thank you, octopus. So that is Thank You, Octopus by me, Darren Farrell. And I hope you loved it. And I'm going to answer some questions and talk about the book now. We have three questions for you. Question one, how did you come up with the book idea? So the idea for Thank You Octopus, I have a really good friend in New York City and his name is Pete. And he's kind of the inspiration for this octopus because he's always playing jokes and tricks on people. And he's done so many funny things over the years. And he's really the inspiration because he would play these tricks where you think he's about to do something nice and then this huge joke gets played out on you and it's really fun and he's always having fun with people. So he's the inspiration for the octopus. And then I just thought that the character of an octopus has eight arms. So you never know what all of those arms are doing. So you might think that a couple of the arms are over here doing one thing, but then he's got four or five other arms back here and you just don't know what they're doing. So they're, they could be setting up a joke. And when you turn the page, you see what's happened. Question two, if you were a vegetable, which vegetable would you be and why? If I, what vegetable would I be and why? I think if I could be any vegetable, I would be pickled cabbage, which is otherwise known as kimchi. Uh, and that's because when I lived in Korea, I used to love to eat kimchi. And when you are a pickled vegetable you get to live forever because you can just stay in that jar. So I would want to be a really, really, really spicy pickled kimchi if I could be any vegetable because that would be so spicy nobody would ever eat me and then I could just live in my brown kimchi pot forever. Question three, what advice would you give someone like me to be an author? So if I had any advice for uh, young writers and illustrators out there, my advice would be to keep a notebook with you all the time and just write down all the funny, interesting people you meet, 
things that happen to you, stories you hear about, and just write down when anything interesting or weird or funny happens. And then go back to that little story that you wrote down about somebody that you met or a story that you heard and expand on it and just practice writing and practice making that story a little longer and see what inspires you. And as you do that every day, you'll just get better and better at writing and you'll have all these interesting stories that you've saved up from the people that you've met and the places that you've been and the animals you bumped into and just always take those notes and I think that will uh, be really helpful for you. Thanks for reading that book, Darren Farrow. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the book. Uh, you can visit me at D-A-R-R-E-N-F-A-R-R-E-L-L dot com. Send me a note. Let me know how it's going. Uh, let me know what book I should write next. Or just say hi. Thank you. Bye, cool cat bro. See you soon. <laughs>